Hi, I'm Kate Gutowski with GE, and welcome to our Facebook Live. Um, I'm really happy uh, to have Lori Jennings with us today. Lori is the Deputy Editor of Good Housekeeping and the Director of the Good Housekeeping Institute. Yeah. So thank you so much for being here, Lori. My pleasure. It's such a thrill in this amazing room. and just like, yes. in awe. That's right. For those of you that are just joining us, um, we are here in Boston at the Langham Hotel. And we um, have assembled a lot of our GE employees and customers um, to explore our leadership through storytelling uh, leadership experience, which is called If You Can See It, You Can Be It. And we've taken um, some time away to uh, explore this topic, which mm -hmm. I know is really important to the good housekeeping readers and also to a lot of our GE employees, mm -hmm. which is a really interesting topic of balance. Mm -hmm. And um, so maybe just to get started, Lori, um, you know, I'd love to get your perspective. You know, what, what, what do you think? Like, is balance possible? Like, can we, can we do it all? What, tell us what, you, what your thoughts are. Well, I, well, first I would say I think balance and doing it all are two separate things. But I would say that for me there's no real separation between work and life. My work is my life. My life is my work. And they all lead together, and I find balance in the moment. Mm. So I don't cut my day off at five, I, but I may, you know, come in late one day because I want to take my daughter to school, or um, I really try and fit the pieces together yeah. in a way that makes sense. So for me, that really is balance, to be honest. So kind of knowing, like, what are the most important moments to be president, mm -hmm. and really trying to be present in those. Absolutely. Yeah, exactly whether it's right. taking your daughter to school or something else. Yeah. Okay. I feel like we don't live in a nine to five world. We live in yeah. a very twenty four seven world, especially with digital. And so, right. you know, right. I might be checking my email at eleven o'clock at night, but I would much rather do that than mm -hmm. ha come in with an inbox of a thousand emails to check in the morning. Yeah. So I'm That's figuring true. it out all the time. I'm doubling up on things all the time. If I'm on the subway or in some kind of public transportation, mm -hmm. I am finding a way to make that time valuable. I make phone calls, yeah. I check my email, I dictate my text messages. Right. Uh, I do all of those things to keep fit all yeah. the balls in the air. Sounds like a lot of multitasking to me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a lot, a lot of balls in the air all the time. That's right. But I also feel like that's how we keep it exciting. Yeah, no, definitely. Well, listen, so for those of you that just might be joining us now, um, my name again is Kate Katowski with GE, and I'm here with Lori Jennings of Good housekeeping. And the topic that we're exploring today is really around uh, can we achieve balance? Is there really such a thing? Mm -hmm. And um, for those of you um, that are watching, uh, we really encourage you to submit your questions. We will be taking questions uh, in a bit. And uh, so encourage you as you're thinking about them to go ahead and submit. Right. Um, we will try to answer all questions. Um, Send them in. <laughs> that's right. That's right. And you know, one thing I know, um, Lori, um, you know, you have, um, you know, a young daughter. Thank you. Um, but I know for those watching, you know, not everyone has a family. Um, mm -hmm. You know, some people have different life circumstances. Mm -hmm. They might have um, an aging parent or they might be a single mom. And, you know, there's all different types of scenarios here. Mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of the, uh, you know, practical advice that um, you'll be sharing with us um, probably relates to not just um, you know young parenting. families Absolutely. or parenting, but mm -hmm. but to all different types of uh, mm -hmm. situations and circumstances. Absolutely. Is that right? Absolutely. At the end of the day, uh, we are all very busy. Many of us, like myself, for example, who's new to New York City, I don't have family in New York, so I yeah. have created a network of friends who are like my family, and That's we look great. after each other. We we look out for each other. We help each other out with our families. You need that network of people that you can rely on and you trust, and you have to build that and you have to yeah. cultivate that. Yeah, absolutely. And tell us, I know you moved to New York from Canada. I did, um, three years ago. Wow. I'm that's wise. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's, um, that's quite a move because mm -hmm. um, it's a different country. Mm -hmm. um, tell us a little bit about that experience and, and how, how did that uh, come about? Absolutely. Well, my current boss, who has been my boss on and off for the last over 20 years, to be honest, Jane Francisco, who's mm -hmm. the editorial director at the Hearst Lifestyle Group and the Editor-in-Chief of Good Housekeeping. Uh, she was approached to take over the helm of Good Housekeeping at the time and asked me to join her. Mm. Uh, so after saying, I really would prefer to take your job, uh, <laughs> I wanted to become Editor-in-Chief of Chatelaine. Which good for you, right? Yes. Ambition is not a bad thing, it's no. a great thing. I, yeah. I really wanted that job, but I did not get that job. I was not the successful candidate for that yeah. job. And thank God that I wasn't yeah. because um, it led me here. 
I moved to New York when I was four months pregnant. Uh, I started my job when I was four months pregnant. Wow. And uh, wow. it was a big, and for the, with the, my first child, so I had no idea what I was in for, to be honest. Uh, and it was a learning curve, and it was and definitely not easy, but it was, um, you know, I feel like I've learned so much, I've grown so much, yeah. and I really have Jane to thank for encouraging me to come to New York, for allowing me, and I think this is an important thing, you know, when you have a boss and there's a leader on your team who respects your boundaries and your time, and mm -hmm. who allows you to manage that yourself, who gives you that freedom, okay. um, it makes all the difference. Great. Um, so I, I thank you for sharing that. I think, um, and, and what it reminds me of is is the fact that um, we're actually here in Boston, mm -hmm. and one of the things that we're here in Boston for is um, our leadership through storytelling uh, event, which we call "If You Can See It, You Can Be It." Mm -hmm. And I'd love for you to maybe share with the audience um, and those listening. You know, what was your you know, if you can see it, you can be it moment. Um, you know, mm -hmm. is there is there a, someone that inspired you mm -hmm. and uh, maybe to, to work uh, mm -hmm. in this industry? Mm -hmm. I have several see it, hashtag see it be it, by the way, if you are <laughs> following along That's right. um, on Twitter or Instagram or any other social platform, see it be it, hashtag see it be it. But, you know, for me, there are a few people, uh, someone that comes to mind very early days is an editor who's no longer with the world. Uh, her name was Elizabeth Tel Tilbaris, and she was the editor-in-chief of Harper's Bazaar magazine when I was still in high school, and she inspired me through her books and her leadership, and I just thought she was the most amazing human being ever. Uh, and then after that, you know, I came home four o'clock every day, and I would watch Oprah Winfrey, and for me, Oprah Winfrey, to this day, forever and always, will be one of the most inspiring leaders I could ever uh, follow and I, you know I've cut out so many articles when she launched her magazine at Hearst actually which is now where I work yeah. which is amazing I'm sure we've been in the building at the same time though I've never met her yet oh wow uh, crossing my fingers for one day <laughs> um, but I just feel like she is so real like she really led that charge of authentic leadership yeah. you know through her weight loss struggles and mm -hmm. sharing her real personal uh, moments and from relationship and her friendship with Gail and her partnership and the stuff that she does in Africa and everything. And I just think, wow, what a leader. And what really sort of inspired me about her is her realness, but also, you know, her ability to help others. Yeah, no, I, I agree. She is, she's a great she's so role model amazing. for so many, um, in so many ways. And, mm -hmm. and probably a great example of someone that's really found a lot of balance mm -hmm. in different areas of her life. Mm -hmm. I think spiritually, career-wise. Financial, her, everything. Yeah, I mean, she's figured right. it out. Yeah, good. Well, I know we're getting some great questions. Um, so I'd love to maybe um, look uh, you know, at some of the questions we're getting. We just got a great uh, question from um, JP uh, Canny. And, and JP's asking, Lori, um, you know, in a connected world, is a real vacation possible? I love this question, that's JP. A, that's amazing because that yes, comes up a lot. Yes, yes. What, what are your thoughts on well, that? Well, it's, it's funny, and you don't know that you're speaking to a former flight attendant here. So, Oh, is that right? <laughs> I feel like I'm well connected <laughs> in the world of vacations. Yeah. Um, but I feel like I've taken many real vacations because for me, real vacation does not mean disconnecting or unplugging necessarily. I want to take photos of my family. I yeah. want to share those photos. Yeah. For many, in many ways, that sharing for me is my own personal diary now. Mm. And it's how I remember things. Yeah. There are so many things going on in my mind all the time yeah. that if I can go back and look at Instagram or Twitter or something and say, oh yeah, remember that time? Yeah. And oh yeah, that was actually this day in 2014 that I would never have remembered that actual day yeah. had it not been for my connected device. Oh, that's great. That's mm -hmm. really great. Um, you know, when I think of connected vacation and I think of JP's question, I actually think of uh, the fact that I get, you know, 400 emails a day on right. average. And right. should I mm -hmm. be laying at the pool e emailing back? I think the rule of thumb I use is, mm -hmm. you know, is it hot? Is it urgent? Mm -hmm. um, 
or you know if it isn't then you know it can probably wait and that's mm -hmm. also I think a great time for leaders to really mm -hmm. delegate to their teams and, and to really you know because you're giving your team a chance to actually do more mm -hmm. and you're growing them and at the same time you can take a real vacation so Absolutely. one of the rules on our team is is that you you can only take a vacation if you have a backup because that Smart. means you know you can really uh, unplug we've also got another uh, question here from Katie and uh, Lori, Katie's asking, how do you deal with guilt? Um, how do you deal with it um, at home, at work? Would love to hear your thoughts on guilt. And Katie, thank you for the question. I feel like guilt is such a challenging topic and it has become such a thing that, yeah. uh, especially women, I don't think any father or any man feels guilt the way that women feel guilt. And I have made a real conscious choice to work hard to not let myself feel guilty. Yeah. If I'm going to work hard because I want to provide for my child or my family, I don't feel guilty about that. And I really sort of, it's a, it's a self-talking yeah. yeah. process. Yeah. Um, and then again, it's to me, it's about the quality time. So you have the time with your kids, you have the time with your family and your relatives, and you really focus on quality in those moments. So guilt for me, like I feel like that's an emotion we can control. Mm. I feel like that is not something that's hormonal. Hormonal is something you can't control. Right. But guilt is something that if you can think about it and if you can logically talk yourself out of it, you can control it. And I have done everything I can to reject the concept of guilt. Yeah. I admire that so much, what Lori. What about you? <laughs> I, yes, I mean, I admire that mostly because I do feel guilty. I won't lie. I do. But, you know, I think what's... What I've found that's really helped me mm -hmm. is that when I'm at work, I am 100% at work. Mm -hmm. I am present. I'm accountable. I'm there. Mm -hmm. And then, but then when I get home, mm -hmm. I'm 100% at home. Right. My husband's been really great about, Kate, don't bring out the laptop. Don't bring out right. the phone. And I'll still check, you know, what's hot, who's dying. Mm -hmm. But, you know, my kids are, are young, and so they don't they go to bed early, and Same. so that's right. right. And so it's if you if you're not going to be present and and there mm -hmm. when they're you know when they're with you, then mm -hmm. you're missing out, right? I agree. And I agree. so I think that's helped me with my guilt because mm -hmm. then you know you're all in on one mm -hmm. or the other, and so mm -hmm. I think that's at least helped me. So I think that just let me jump in, but yeah. that idea of being present in the moment. I mean, yeah. I know at least I think I know. Um, that you are an avid yogi. Yes, and yes, I so love yoga. I. I love yoga, all yes. forms of yoga, yeah. including meditation, though I'm not as good at that. I, I'm terrible at meditation. But moving yeah. meditation of yoga. I need to learn from you on that. Yeah. It's, har it's harder, but the point is, one of the things you learn in yoga is to be focused in the moment. And yes. you're right, to yeah. focus in the moment, whether you're at work, because work is busy. Yes. There's not a lot of time, time or headspace to right. think about things that are not happening in that moment. That's right. And I feel like if you can apply those principles to your home life as well and be yeah. focused in the moment That's with right. your family, 100% present, as much as possible. I mean, you know, I, I'm sure my husband would be laughing if he heard me say this right now because yeah. he'd be saying, you're always checking your device or sneaking to the bathroom <laughs> or doing right, something. Right, right. We've all snuck to the bathroom. Let's not <laughs> lie. Let's not lie. We've all done it. We've all done it. Yeah. But we do what we can do yeah. in the moment. That's right. right. That's right. No, that's exactly right um, and I find just like you I think kind of taking advantage of all of those small moments mm -hmm. um, you know to, to, to kind of maybe get a note in here and mm -hmm. there um, you know I think always helps right I just Absolutely. and then I feel less guilty about Absolutely. the work thing so I think Katie what you're experiencing we all do um, I think we've got more questions coming in and um, we now have another question from Andrea and Andrea is asking, you know, does your partner help you to balance the equation? And I, oh my gosh. I love this question, yeah. Andrea. What are, what, Lori, t tell us about you. I know you've uh, got a great uh, partner at home. I, I actually do. I'm a I am very lucky to say um, that I have probably the most supportive partner on the planet. He is a trained chef. Oh, that's um, what you scored there. I, I did. A lot of my friends say that often. <laughs> yeah. And secretly, what's the I best say, thing that he makes? Right. You know what? We eat very simply. He's, oh, okay. eat, you know, but yeah. but the thing that's really nice about that is yeah. that he has, and because in the United States, because we're Canadian in the United States, he's he is not working. Uh, yeah. So I am actually the only person working in our household in the U.S., which is sort of uncommon in this day and age. But as and when I say he's not working, I mean he's not working in an office somewhere. He's sure. very much working sure. to raise our daughter and keep our home right. organized and yeah. you know 
but and he cooks all of our meals daily. He shops oh, wow. at the market daily. That's great. Uh, and I just feel like so. Yes, if I did not, ha if I had somebody who worked in my life the same hours that I do, yeah. with the same intensity that I do, mm. it might not work. Right. You know, because right. we don't have a nanny. We have a babysitter, but we don't have a nanny, and we right. have you know again that that setup of friends in the yeah. neighborhood who are helping right. us, but. Right. But we're very lucky at this stage in our lives where our daughter is so young to have him home. That's not going to last forever. Um, yeah. But in this time, we've been able to really make something special happen. Right. And I know that that's unique. That's really special. Mm -hmm. That's really special. What about you? I mean, I've heard you talk about your husband a lot while yes. we've been here, but I haven't. Yes. You know, what's his story? Yeah, <laughs> no, look, I, I am the lucky, I feel the same way. I'm the luckiest woman on the planet. Mm. And um, so my husband, Jeff, is just, a, you know, a prince, as my mom says. Uh -huh. But um, but he's really, you know, I think when, when he and I were dating and, and, and thinking about, you know, the future, we always said from the beginning that we really wanted everything to be 50-50. Mm -hmm. And that, that was really important to us. And, and it isn't always because there's, you know, there's sway that happens, mm -hmm. right? There's mm -hmm. kind of the ebb and flow of mm -hmm. life. Um, like when he's in a new job, you know, I'll do more. Mm -hmm. when, when I'm in a new job, you know, he'll do more. And we just, we just always have each other's back. Right. And, um, We've also learned like what we like to do. Right. So for example, I have a department, like mm -hmm. I love to cook and mm -hmm. I, and mm -hmm. so my department is, you know, cooking and doing all the grocery shopping. Wow. But what's great is, you know, I can't stand laundry, but that's <laughs> his department. And so, you know, he, he will do the laundry. And so, so I think it's just about like finding your the department, trade -offs. The trade -offs. right? And then owning your department. Then right. you got to keep up your department, mm -hmm. of course. Um, and and uh, let's see. So I know we've also got another question coming in, and this time it's uh, from uh, Mariette's, and and she asks, um, how do you tell your family that you have to work on weekends or holidays? Um, does that happen to you from time that, to time, Lori? It absolutely. And how does. do you navigate that? It absolutely does. And and I because I'm part of a family that celebrates Christmas at Christmas, mm -hmm. and then also Orthodox Christmas. Uh, which is about one week later. Ah, so yeah. we have two Christmases, yeah. uh, which is really hard because I often miss the second Christmas mm. because I have to work because work, unfortunately, does not celebrate two Christmases or allow for two <laughs> Christmases. Yeah. Uh, so, um, so I have to say I just don't sugarcoat it. I mean, yeah. I'm just really straightforward and I say this is my reality. And yeah. it's sort of like you, it's the same as what you do at your, at your job. You provide as much notice as you can. That's right. You are focused when you can be there. You That's work right. around. I heard a, someone said something really interesting yesterday where, you know, they have their birthdays for their children and then their children has their other birthday, which is the birthday that they have when their parents are actually home. Yes. And I feel yes. like that's such a, to me, that rang in my ear like, what a great idea. So if I'm working on my daughter's birthday, we'll just have another birthday. Right. No big deal. Who doesn't want a set, like another Everybody birthday party? Everybody wants two birthdays. Yeah, that's right. Every year. That's so it's right. kind of like you win. You just, I think this is all, it's all about perspective and it's yeah. all about how you perceive things. And if you can find the positive and if you can find the upside, there is a silver lining to every situation. I've really yeah. learned that in recent years. And I just think if you can find that upside, if you can twist that thinking around away from the negative, anything is possible and people accept it. Yeah, no, I think that's so true. I think that's so true. Um, We've also got um, another question that's come in, um, this time from Nazrieta, and she's asking us to um, to give a bio, a little bit of um, a little bit of background on ourselves. Oh, geez, so interesting. Um, How far back are we going here? <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we start with you, Lori? Um, well, let me. T I mean, uh, I grew up. I was born in Sudbury, Ontario, which is a very small mining community in northern Ontario, which is in one of the provinces in Canada. I moved to the Toronto area you know, around 18 years old, where I went to university or college, as you would say here in the United States. Yeah. I worked in, I worked for the Toronto International Film Festival. I did mm. a lot of freelance work. I wanted to work at a magazine so badly and nobody would hire me. <laughs> and I'm not even I, kidding. I, I don't believe that. It's actually true. Because, and I did not, you know, so I didn't do the traditional route of a magazine editor who becomes an editorial assistant and then gets promoted to assistant editor and then, you know, works their way up. I worked at the Toronto Film Festival in publications, then I worked for the Magazine Publishers Association of Canada, then I worked as a flight attendant throughout and sort of on and off throughout there. And finally, um, well I should backtrack one thing, right? In my very first year of university slash college, I met my current boss. 
and the way that I met her, I had told you this story. Yes, I love this story. Yeah. Uh, which is, I found a magazine that I just loved at a garage sale. And I thought, wow, this magazine's so amazing, it's so cool. It was a little bit like Vanity Fair, but Canadian with fashion. Anyway, I looked at the address, and there it is, 9 St. Nicholas Street, which was right downtown Toronto. So I marched up, uh, brazen girl, I was brazen but marched up the stairs, four flights of stairs, and she was walking through the office. And I said, I want to work here, what can I do? Yeah. And she said, do you know how to build websites? I said, no, but I can learn. And so she said, okay, you will be our web editor. And that is how I met the woman over 20 years mm. ago, who is still my boss today, who I've worked with on eight different magazines, wow. who essentially is the reason that I live in the US. And you know, I just think, wow, that's amazing. And I would not be here had it not been for that almost chance encounter when I was about 20 years old. And I love that you just went for it, right? Mm -hmm. I love that you you said, this is what I want to do, mm -hmm. and I'm just going to go for it. Mm -hmm. I think that takes a lot of courage, mm -hmm. um, but you're, I'm, I'm sure you're so glad you did, because now you're... I'm so glad. Yeah. I'm so glad. I, um, you know, to answer, Nazareta, your, your question, um, you know, I, uh, my background is, um, you know, so I currently live in Boston, and um, I, I uh, started with GE right out of college um, on the technical leadership program. And uh, when you graduate from it, it's a two-year corporate training program where you move all around the country. GE gave us some great experiences. And um, most of my career has really been in um, sales and sales leadership. Mm -hmm. uh, more recently, I had the opportunity to go to Budapest, Hungary with my amazing. family so and um, get outside my comfort zone in a lot of different ways. Mm -hmm. um, but I had the opportunity to lead our uh, commercial operations um, and then also um, our product management and marketing. And um, then I came back recently uh, to the US and I'm living here in Boston and leading our digital sales transformation. In a new role. Yeah, that's right, in a new role. And so, um, so it's been a lot of fun and um, GE's been a great place to work. And uh, I think what I love about GE is that this is a place where if you have an idea or something that you wanna do, um, as long as you really build the right business case, mm -hmm. um, you can go and do it. And, and it's been a really empowering place to work. So I'm curious, is that, so here we are at See It, Be It, your yeah, event yeah. that you've created and done, I think you said five times now yeah. in, around the world. Yeah. And is that something that you feel came through that, you know, get uncomfortable? Because to yeah. me, this event has been truly amazing. Oh, thank you so um, much. Yeah. yeah, no, you know, I think, um, you know, it was a, it was a mentor um, of mine, um, actually Mary Rose Sylvester, who runs our current business, that really gave me this great advice that, you know, Kate, if you want to grow as a leader, you mm -hmm. really have to get uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And that's, and then what's kind of happened to me is, is that once you start to get uncomfortable, it starts to become addictive. Right, you're and comfortable you, being uncomfortable. Right, and then you just start growing more and more, mm -hmm. and so it's, 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 um, great. it's been a lot of fun. Um, so um, let's see, so I know we've got another question that's just come in, Lori. Okay, great. And um, this question is from Anna, so thank you, Anna, for asking the question. Um, she's asking, Lori, um, you know, she's asking, how do you manage, you know, travel and dual careers? Uh -huh. um, so, um, I know I've got a dual career. Uh -huh. I can maybe take this one. Sure. Um, okay. So um, my husband is is working. Um, he's uh, you know we've been in jobs where we both travel, mm -hmm. um, which has been tough because um, uh, he's got a great career. He's a human resources director. Wow, yeah, that's kind of lucky to have a human resources director at home. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. That's right. That's right. He's got a lot of great skills. But um, but one of the ways that we've managed it um, is. So we, we've had it, I'll call it, we've had it light and we've had it heavy. Okay. Um, so when we've had heavy travel, which we both did in Europe, uh -huh. um, when he was running health and safety for Eastern Europe, what we did is we had a Kate week and we had a Jeff week. Oh, and we had a Kate week and had a Jeff week. And we had the whole year planned out that way. Wow. And what it meant was, was that um, neither one of us, we knew it wasn't good for kind of mind, body, soul to right. travel every single week mm -hmm. um, and, and it wasn't good for the family. So what we said is we said, let's plan it out where every other week mm -hmm. 
you know, you, you can, Lori, you know, if, if it's your week, you can go wherever you want, do whatever you want. I'm going to plan to be in the office. Right. And then on a Jeff week, um, you know, same thing. Opposite. It was the opposite. And it worked really well. And, and I would say it worked about 95% of the time. That's amazing. And we had some great balance mm -hmm. in terms of getting work travel done. But we also had balance with the family mm -hmm. and also just with rest and mm -hmm. taking care of yourself physically. Smart. Yeah. So that was, that was a, a good way to do it. So. I would, let me just say, um, because one of the things that we've done, so when we first moved to New York, uh, my husband Mike was still going back to Canada. He had a yeah. catering company there, so he was ah. traveling back and forth a lot. Okay, good. So how did you guys manage that? So uh, we managed it in that he took our daughter with him a lot of the time. Oh, that's great. And I would go, and he would try and plan. And the reason he did that was because we had both sets of parents, as well mm. as he's from a family of four siblings. I'm from, I have my sister. And again, we just used our family members yeah. as our network of support. That's great. And he would try and do it over weekends, or because he was an entrepreneur and still is to this day, um, he was able to manage his schedule. And the beauty That's of great. a catering company is a lot of the events are on the weekend. So whenever possible, we would all go together. Uh, we always travel separately. So you kind of made fun out of it, right? We totally made fun That's out of great. it. That's great. My parents were thrilled because they spent so much time with my daughter that That's they would great. not have had the opportunity to do otherwise. Yeah. And we just. You know, again, it's a just keeping the balls in the air all the time. I love that example because I think that's such a great example of, I think you can make anything work. And fun. And if you just like, yeah, you plan, you mm -hmm. have fun, mm -hmm. and um, you're creative, right? Mm -hmm. And it seems like you, you were on, on that. Mm -hmm. um, just looking at the time, gosh, this has gone so fast, Lori. Right? <laughs> I think we have time for just one more question. Wow, okay. And it looks like... Um, you know, we, we have one question that just came in from Tracy, mm -hmm. and she's asking, um, you know, wow, this event that you're at, it, you know, is called If You Can See It, You Can Be It. Mm -hmm. um, who helped you see it? Well, geez, I mean, I will say, um, in all honesty, I think my parents really helped me see it. Even though, and I don't mean because they were leaders, uh, but because they were supporters. So my father's an electrician and my mother essentially worked for the government, um, very you know, mid-level um, jobs in a way, but they put so much support and, um, and sort of influence into their children in that they really made us believe. I never once thought there was something I couldn't do. Yeah. I never once thought, you know, don't try always my parents were there saying absolutely try we may not understand why you're doing this or what you're doing <laughs> right, right but you know and I feel like they my mother put me in French in French immersion when I was very young oh that's so um, great because she worked for the Canadian government and it was all about being able to speak English and French you had to be bilingual so that was a big uh, big it meant a lot to my parents to do that yeah and I feel like that gave me opportunities that I may not have had otherwise I feel um, just really thankful in a way for having these people who literally put their children first above all else at all times mm. and you know we've been hearing all of these stories about all of these people who grew up in environments that were not like that I thought everybody had supportive parents I really right. did right and I'm right. hearing more and more people don't so I just feel so thankful because you know I felt like I could see it and be it from day one always so great so great. Now, you're exactly right. I think that's what's been eye-opening about being here and listening to our customers and our employees' stories mm -hmm. is that, you're right, there's a lot of things that we take for granted. Mm -hmm. um, my experience was very similar to you in that um, when I was growing up, my parents always said, Cato, you can do it, <laughs> you know, and, and they just always were, you I know. I was Lorio. <laughs> were you really? <laughs> yeah. My dad is Daddio, <laughs> who's at my house right so. now, actually, <laughs> while I'm here. But, um, but, but, you know, um, the, you're, I, I think that, that power of positive thinking mm -hmm. really makes a difference. Mm -hmm. I, I, in fact, I just wrote my mom recently. I, just, I gave her um, the same book, um, you know, the, uh, that I love, you know, 101 oh, yeah. Stories. Share that, share that book because I feel like if you have not read that book, yes, yes. can't wait to get home and read that There's book. There's a great book that we gave out here. It's called um, Good Night Stories for Rebel Girls, and it's my uh, children's favorite book. And uh, it's my favorite book, too, as someone who reads to them every night along with my husband, but um, we never get tired of, of reading it because it's so inspiring. Wait. I can't wait to start it. But when I wrote to my mom in, inside that book, I said, thank you so much for always telling me that I could do or be anything in the mm -hmm. world that I wanted mm -hmm. because 
I just believed you. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I would say that my mom probably really was the one that gave me a lot of inspiration. She was someone who um, stayed at home for a long time um, and with uh, my brother and my sister and I, but then later on she decided she wanted a career mm -hmm. and, and really went for it and, um, and just had a really successful career, a great marriage, three great kids, of Amazing. which I'm one. <laughs> and so it just kind of showed me that anything is possible. I agree so, yeah. completely. So good. So with that, um, I think that's a great note that's to end That's a really on. great note to end. Yeah. It so really look, is. I want to thank everyone so much uh, for uh, joining us. You know, we think this uh, topic of uh, balance is really important, especially as our lives between work and life continue to blur. And um, I just want to thank you all for your questions. They were really thoughtful and really insightful. And most importantly, we want to thank you, Lori, for being here. It's so great to spend time with you and, and, and to be able to learn from you. So thank and you so much. I say likewise. Absolutely. I've been just amazed, 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 amazed at Aww. everything you have achieved here. It's been really, really, truly inspiring. And as someone who's a storyteller for a living, <laughs> um, you know, learning more about storytelling and hearing the stories of the people here have just been so amazing. And, you know, if you haven't, if you haven't checked out the stories, you should. Um, it's just... It's been great. Really, really great. That's Thank great. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Thanks again. Have a great day.